communication takes work. You know, the most important part of this, because you're communicating with somebody, they're going to be looking at your printed word, either on the screen or on a piece of paper or some other mechanism. But the reality is they're going to make an impression of you by what they see and what they perceive you said. So it's a big deal. This communication part really is a matter of you trying to convey to them your professionalism. So it's critical that you go through and pay attention to workplace writing. It should be purposeful. It, it should have a meaning to solve problems, convey information. It should be economical. Don't waste people time with too many words. Don't babble on. If you ever write an email that goes past one screen, you ought to go back and re-examine it because nobody wants to have their time wasted by somebody that's going on and on with something that could be said in a few words. It should be audience-centered. Know who you're talking to and make certain that the message is really geared towards them. What's in it for them? Make certain that they're engaged on a topic that they're interested in or that's critical for them to know about. It takes a lot of work. There's a pre-writing. Figure out who your audience is. What's the purpose of your communication? Anticipate the reaction to the message. And then you want to adapt that message to the audience. And then now you're going to draft it. This is not to slop something down. This is actually thinking about, okay, I'm going to do this. You're going to research. You're going to spend time collecting information. Then you're going to organize it in a way that makes sense. And then you're going to draft the first version. I don't know if you've heard what he said. Draft the first version because if you're going to come across as a pro, you need to make certain that you're going to make that you have a really good quality final version. And then you want to edit for clarity, proofread it. Did you hear what I said? Edit for clarity and proofread it. Proofread it not just once, not just twice. Okay. Sometimes to get it right, you got to do it multiple times and evaluate whether that message will accomplish the goals that you want to have. Now, the proofreading part is a big deal. You want to analyze your purpose. Okay, what should the receiver do or believe based upon what you're saying? What channel is best? You know, I realize that we live in this technology world and everybody thinks technology is the height of everything. A lot of times on a really tough message or difficult message, face-to-face, -face, talking to somebody face-to-face -face is a big deal or video chatting is a mediocre second way of doing it, but at least you get to see facial expressions, you get to have the nonverbal communication, you get to have the verbal communication and see where they're coming from. A, a group meeting sometimes is good, although meetings sometimes can suck an awful lot of time. Here in the world of academia, we think that the more meetings you have and the more often you, that you sit down and, and just babble on the same thing, it seems like they solve things. They really don't a lot of times. Email a lot of time is good, but you lose that human element. And in my opinion, email is only good for communicating information. If you go past information into other worlds of the emotional content, email is a mediocre to poor form of communication. A memo, a very formal process is a memo. A letter, a report, a blog, a Slack, a tweet, which one is best for the message? And what barriers are there for each channel? Then you have to anticipate the audience profile. Are they going to be neutral to your message? Are they going to be really positive to your message? Are they going to be really negative against your message? That's going to convey the words you're going to use and the way you're going to approach it. Does the receiver know the content already? What's the response? What will it be? That's going to have an effect on your strategy. And then how can you adapt your message to this audience? You might have the same message to carry to another, another meeting or another group, but you may have to adapt it to this group or to this group and have really similar messages with the basic content, but approach it differently. Can you promote feedback? Listen, if you want somebody to do something for you, if they have feedback with it and they get a response, it always works so much better. And then how do you ensure a positive, courteous conversation? Courtesy is almost a thing of the past in a lot of companies. You really need to sit down. If you grab that thing, it really helps them off a lot. Research, organize. You want to have your draft. You want to have all this together. On the research, gather data. Have an intelligent opinion. You know, with these things called cell phones nowadays, everybody's out there and they just blather on with their own opinion. They have all this stuff. I mean, social media is so full of inaccuracies. 
if you post something, you ought to be the intelligent opinion, which is how we started this whole section over here. Make certain your opinion is intelligent because you've researched it and you're the one that when you speak, people stop what they're doing and they listen to what you want to say. Search the company it files for information. You know what? You may have an opinion and all of a sudden you found your opinion was torpedoed three years ago in another meeting. Okay, then you better go back and reconsider your opinion. And then if you want to continue with it, have additional things that they didn't consider back then. Talk with the boss and the colleagues. You don't want to have something you're going to push a big, a big emphasis on and all of a sudden your boss hates the idea and the idea ought to sit down there and be strung up and maybe you with it. You don't want to have that happen. Search the internet. The internet is certainly not the most area full of facts, but you can get an awful lot of details that will help you in an awful lot of ways. Organize your messages. Big idea first, because you want to grab their attention. You need to have a hook there to grab their attention. And then explain the, the, in the body and, and, and what it's all about. And then at the close, request a specific action. We call that a call to action. For persuasive or negative messages, you want to use an indirect problem solving strategy because you may get pushback on them. So you want to make certain that you're answering questions before they're even asked. So prepare that first draft, write it quickly, and then focus on short, clear sentences using active voice. It's always a big deal. Build your paragraph coherence by repeating key ideas, use pronouns, incorporate appropriate transitional phrases. Now, the way you're supposed to write a paragraph, go back to basic English. That first sentence in the paragraph ought to explain what the whole paragraph about, and the rest of the paragraph should be able to support that first topic sentence. That's good writing. Follow the practice of good writing. Edit, edit, edit. Edit for clear, concise, readable, conversational words, eliminate wordy fillers. Don't sit down. An awful lot of lawyers, I think, they, they feel that they need to get paid by the word. And the longer the word, they should get paid $5 versus the short word, they get paid $1 for it. You know, that really is blathering by the time you're all done. And an awful lot of documents like that really need to have a, a big red pen sent to them. You could probably reduce a lot of documents down to a fraction of what they were if you got rid of wordiness of the whole thing. Eliminate those fillers, the long leads, redundancies, trite phrases. If you say, I believe in management by walking around on your resume, it, people just tend to file things like that because that is such an old worn out phrase and there's an awful lot of them just like that. Proofread the message. If it's a major document, take the time out to do it. I've written a couple books. In the process, just so you know, I edit my books and I proofread them about seven to 12 times to make certain I got it right. I read books backwards to front the yeah, one way because I was so bored of reading it and everything else. You get so stuck in your aspect. You want to do it different ways. Take the time to get it right. Look for errors in spelling, grammar, punctuation, names, numbers. Be careful on your spell check. Sometimes spell check, you may have accepted a bad spelling once upon a time and you added it to your dictionary and your computer and it'll keep on giving you the same error. Be careful about that. Make certain the format is consistent as to how you want it to look. Make certain that left-hand margin is nice and crisp. And if you have an indent, that the indent's appropriate and you may have to come back out again later on or even further in. Make certain you're doing it properly. Make certain the message after you're all done that you're achieving the purpose. You have a tone that's friendly, not curt. Okay, and audience will find the message appealing. Pacing the writing process, look at this. The pre-write's 25% and revising is 50%. That's what it takes. By the time you're all done with this thing, pre-writing 25%, drafting the, the memo, and then revising, 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 it takes work. Once upon a time, well, maybe more than this once, I was bad. I had a dean. And I, the dean and I, I just really didn't like him. And he really didn't like me. And sometimes that happens. And he would talk too much and everything. So I always wrote these perfect one-page memos. I was a chief business officer of a college. And, and I, I sent out a memo to everybody. And I had three questions on my memo. Now, the problem was the memo was really well written. And I answered those questions, except for the fact that they didn't get them. So they're asking me a question. And it kind of dawned on me that, well, maybe I wasn't quite as good as I thought. 
I, I criticized myself. I don't need your help. So, so by the time it was all done, I thought, okay. So I'm at a conference and I'm speaking. I'm talking about teamwork. And as I'm talking about a teamwork, I had just done something bad to this dean. I had sent him an email knowing he would flare up. And this is before we called trolls. Back then we called him, I, I got him to flame out. So, so he flamed out, he went nuts. He carbon copied lots of people with his ridiculousness. I was chuckling the whole time. I was extraordinarily bad. So but by the time it was all done, I thought, okay. I, I, so while I'm talking, I thought, okay, you need to sit down and do something because you're supposed to be a leader. And so I thought, okay, I need to sit back and pretend I really am a team player. So let me do this. The next time he wrote a memo, I went down to his office. I said, okay, take a look at this. He says, why? I says, because I need your input. He was really skeptical and I can't blame him. So I says, I says, here's the information. And so we went over my beautiful one page memo and, and he says, so he asked a couple questions and then he revised it. He added two big paragraphs to it. So all of a sudden my one page memo became more than one page. And those two paragraphs, I already said what he said. I sent it out. I didn't get any questions. And actually there's a pretty complex topic. What I found was I thought this way. He thought this way. Well, he wasn't the only one that thought this way. So I went through the process of getting input is the, the this critical memo. I had this input into it. I sent it out to the entire college. And when it, everybody understood it because of the fact that I was using the concept of diversity because he thought differently than I did. And he answered questions, even though I thought I answered them, he answered them in a way that they understood. You know, ever since then, and we're talking a long time has gone by since then, ever since then, every type of major topic that I write, I go and I have input from different people, sometimes four and five people, and I add things to make certain that I get it right. That's how important this whole thing of editing is. So yes, I was bad. And to be honest, we still don't like each other, but at least now we're cordial to each other. So, so the reality of it really comes down to that whole thing of getting input puts a big deal. And the, and the really the 25% pre-writing, 25% drafting, 50% revising, that's big. If it's important enough to send, it's to send important enough to look at twice. Major communications, use the group editing team. I'm telling you, it really works. Good communication takes work. And by the way, that's why they call it work, not fun. Anyway, so communication takes work. Take care.